So guys, is it okay if we talk for a moment about Santorini? Jay, do you feel yeah. okay with all right? So everyone in who's watching. Um so last week, Kim and I talked about Santorini, and one thing that came up was the vampires of Santorini. And of course, Santorini being the origin of the story of Atlantis. Um, and I came to the conclusion that the origin of the vampires of Santorini is the old lava tubes and when the island blew up in the, you know, in 2600 BC, um, that there were a lot of caves started and the areas where the island collapsed. So it made all these caves where water and wind go in, they make a loud noise and bats live in caves. So um, my thought was that was the origin of it. And a number of you contacted me, boo, <laughs> Benita, you suck. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'm like, but if Santorini is a, you know, like I need a little more, you know, I, I walk through dimensions, but I always want evidence. So um, when Kim and I decided to look at her house and talk about, oh, Kim lives in a haunted house. She always lives in a haunted house. I, I said, we need to get someone who can be like the tiebreaker on what's real and what's, you know, whatever. And Archangel Michael came to me, which was funny because while I know him, we don't work together a lot. And he said, you need to get my friend. But Jay, you know, with isolation and everything, I don't remember anyone's names. For the life of me, I couldn't remember your name. So and I was looking through all of my old stuff because, you know, I know we attended events together. We emailed together and all of my old emails are like deleted. And I was like going nuts for like a couple of hours. Actually, I was looking for you. And I mean, I remembered you and I, I mean, I remember the many times we've run into each other uh, because you imprint on people. And I was like, damn it, what's his name? Of course, that's like, I know, I don't remember my own name half the time. So that's very common for me. And then Archangel Michael said, you know, um, you could look in Alexandria's emails. And I was like, that's weird. So I went combing through any emails I sent back and forth with my, a friend of mine, Alexandria, and there was an email where she was looking for a house clearer, and I recommended you. This was years ago. Um, and there you were with your contact information, your phone number, your, your old website. And I was like, yes, thank you. Okay, Archangel Michael's doing right by me. For some reason, he really wants me to connect with Jay. And then I looked at the work you're doing now. And of course, you and he are good buddies. And then we spoke and um, I was catching you up on, since the work on this work is not, well, I know we did uh, aliens versus light beings conversations and stuff at the wellness center. But um, I mentioned Santorini and you, had a very strong response <laughs> that really uh, shows my simple answer of, oh, it's just wind in caves is like pretty basic. So take it away, Jay. I don't know where to start with. Um, the first thing you said was it was one of the most evil, malevolent energy places you've ever been in your life. You were teaching angel healing while under attack constantly by dark forces. Right. So. I mean, um, I mean, I went. I was so naive in energy at that time because that was 12, 13 years ago. Now, um, and um, I thought, oh, what a blessing going to Santa, beautiful Santorini. What a, what a hardship, you know, and teaching angel teachings, you know, uh, with the angel. And you know, helping that civilization, right? Uh, you know, heal itself. So I thought, you know, what, you know, what, what a you know, unique experience, right? But when I got there, it was like all the energies from from the beginning of time. It's the cradle 
of civilization, right? So all of those entities, um, you know, um, gods and goddesses and all of that, um, you know, was alive. I mean, there was pterodactyls flying around and stuff when we were, you know, working, going out at night and so forth. Um, and it got to be a joke in the class because someone brought in, you know, a uh, Egyptian, you know, um, book of all the images, right? And we would open it and said, yeah, I saw that one, and I saw that one, and, you know, and then, you know, and, and you're like, when you're dealing with it and you got a whole class, like you're, you know, you're responsible, right? So, and, and I wasn't, you know, I didn't know what I know now in terms of dealing with different types of energies, so. But I had enough training, Buddhist training and the angelic work and so forth, that everything that I needed to deal with, cope with all those different types of energies, you know, I, I had experience with from, from that perspective, but, but not the experience of actually doing hand-to-hand -hand combat with the stuff. Um, and, but, um, but you, you, I mean, first of all, Santorini was on trade routes. So they did have, you know, it was an international society there, a very high-end international mm -hmm. society. So they would have been um, as comfortable with the Greek gods as with, you know, the Egyptian gods as with, you know, any of them. And they would, they loved idols there. They were known for their love of opulence and statuary. And, you know, they, they were, so it makes sense then that all of that energy would be still living there. Because to this day, even though Greece is very Catholic, they're still very ancient gods as well. Yeah, it was like, um, well, this was one of the first times where I really just trusted spirit, you know, and, you know, normally, you know, and they said I must go and I didn't have, a, I didn't have any program. I didn't know what I was going to do. <laughs> they wanted me to go and teach, teach what I do, but I didn't feel that was right mm -hmm. because I, I do so many different things and to just to go there, drop it all on their laps and then leave the country, um, you know, I, I didn't feel that would be responsible. So what we came up with was like a retreat and I did Buddhist ceremonies in the morning, like around group healings, around clearing things, blockages to prosperity, um, you, you know, whatever, whatever topic the class wanted to work on. And then in the afternoon, I did the angel teachings. Um, and um, so one of the, like, the day trips that we took was out to do an, an island with an active volcano. And we took a boat trip out and, and, and I don't know if you know Santorini, but there's, you know, it, the, it was volcanic and the water filled in. So you got this peninsulas on each side sort of. And, um, and so you have to take a boat out to this, this island and you know, where the active volcano is. And I was being hit with negative energies from, from like, natives it was like, you know, with the, those little, you know, the, little, darts. Those little things and they're doing shooting stuff, energy out, you know, at us. And we were ducking, you know, I had everyone ducking under the thing to, so that we wouldn't get hit with the energy uh, and have to clear it. Um, uh, and then we got there and then they were protecting me. The whole class would walk around as a group and we walked up to a spot where we did a, a, a Buddhist ceremony, for, you know, for clearing the island and so forth. Um, and um, but I'm, the reason why I'm telling the story but on the way back, um, we're, we're down at the base and you had to climb up this windy road to get to the top of the Santorini, where were all the shops and the cobblestone street, the beautiful, you know, streets that you see when the pictures and so forth. And as I was walking, I kept I feeling like, yeah, you know, I felt like the presence of people around me, and then I felt I felt like a cross on you know an energetic cross on my shoulder. And as I walked up higher and higher and higher, it got heavier and heavier and heavier. You know, it literally was a cross, you know, and, and people can feel it and sense it, okay? Mm -hmm. So when we got back to the, you know, the, the hotel where I was having, doing the, you know, the class, I set this thing energetically up on the outside, okay? And then the next morning we did a clearing in the morning for the Buddhist ceremony for clearing that energy. And people were just crying over, you know, I mean, this was real for them. The whole class thing, you know, and um, oh, it, yeah. was, it was very uh, real 
Um, so were you saying mean, people are crying? Do you mean the students or the students. community? No, the students. Okay. I mean, it was very emotional. And so it was clearing all the negative energies from all the ages that were, you know, wow. we did the, the Buddhist ceremony. It was very powerful. Um, and, you know, and um, I mean, there was all types of stuff going on there um, all, all class long. I had one one student who was supposed to come to the class but didn't come to the class because I I killed his mother in a past life. And um, you're it, welcome. It, it, it would be funny, <laughs> except for he was using black magic and stuff. Oh, so, you didn't so, want him in your class anyway. No, anyway. no, I, I didn't. But um, the ironic part was that you know. I was doing stuff to, you know, to hold that off and clear any influence from that. Um, but his father got killed in an, an uh, uh, airplane crash while wow. we were doing that week. All right, and, and I had to do all types of clearing, you know, to clear out the karma between all of us, uh, you know, involved in that past lifetime. Um, uh -huh. um, I don't know, there was all types of things going on. Um, there was a major fire in Greece. And so one so one morning we did a practice to help retain, you know, contain the fire. Um, and it did, the, you know, it subsided the next day. Um, um, so we did things like that, but we also had mm -hmm. all this energy interference, um, you, yeah. know, you know, happening at the same time. It was like when I was walking one evening when we were just going out to dinner, I was walking down that beautiful cobblestone street and the merchants and all the white stone things. And, you you know, the merchants were just sending negative energy. You know, I was like filled like with barbs of energy. Uh, I could barely move. Yeah. Um, and so the next day, the class had to work on me. So do you think they were sending you the negative energy because they didn't want you clearing the energy? They were trying to stop you from doing that? I, yeah, I, I do believe that. Um, mm -hmm. And from time to time, I still get hit, you know, from... Yeah. Well, from, you got hit yesterday. I, I did, yes. Yeah, you thought that you had cleared everything from Santorini. Our talking about it yesterday, there was something that was dormant, like the volcano, and it came up and... You weren't even sure if you could join us tonight or not. Yeah, and well, the night before, I also, I mean, I got, I woke up in the middle of the night, like two, I was, up for, I was clearing for two and a half hours. I mean, I, every 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 place I looked, I, stuff was coming at me. And so wow. I had to use everything I know in, in space clearing and all the new energies coming in. Um, but when that goes crazy, generally, you know, um, you know, and Benita, maybe you can talk to this, but um, like my Akashic records gets broken into by these energies. I mm. never thought that was possible. Um, um, but I work with an energetic um, healer. Yeah. And he, he said, you know, when it first came up, like two or three years ago, that that's what happened. And so we redid everything. We had the angels, Archangel Michael come in and mm -hmm. there was an upper room and where, where they're not supposed to have any connection to. What they're the doing. Down on the floor, huh? Yeah, no, I can see what they're doing. It's similar to a possession because they can't get into the library and get at your books. What they're doing is they're going through you and traveling through your personal connection to the library. Yeah, I mean, well, it got, I mean, it happens so often, like when things go crazy, yeah. like that, I know it's, I have to check there because they, they did it again. And yeah, and it got to the point I just gave Metatron, you know, you know, my Akashic records and he has That's them wise. and he tells That's me wise. to destroy, I see like a, like a, like a mausoleum type of building as where my records are and with, with, with the lock on and two angels uh -huh. out in front. But he said, just destroy it. Like, like yesterday, you know, when I was doing it. Yeah. So I but just, what I'm I just seeing, huh? because, you know, of course, you have a cord of connection, not mm -hmm. just to your soul, but to the library. And of course, your soul and each of your past lives have the connection because it's the same library for the entire collective of you. Right. So it could be they're going in through you, or it could be they're going in through one of your other lives where they sneak 
into or past you or bypass you to the cord of connection you have going to the library, like a garden hose, they're like going through like, oh, that's gonna look sexual. Uh, they're gonna go through like water going through a garden hose mm -hmm. to the mm -hmm. other end. Mm -hmm. So this is really sneaky. Really, you got you got some demonic enemies there. And I see a lot of black ichor and they're just like like a tar kind of ugh. so mm -hmm. um they what they want to do is corrupt you there so that then you'll because Jay, it's not just in this life you are someone who does healing and teaching and cleansing. That is you know, many of your past lives and your soul, this is part of your overall uh, essence. So they would love to corrupt the totality of you. Well, it's also they're changing the records. Yeah. So they're absolutely. saying I made contracts with them that I didn't. Right. And therefore, the universe acts it out. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And the angels that were guarding it, I found out after a while, I started tracing what they were doing. They were shifting them into a different timeline yeah and it so, is okay for you to destroy your records because everything that's in the records is also in your soul mm -hmm. so all you're doing is destroying a one hard copy but the original copy is still there and can mm -hmm. recreate the hard copy with effortlessly so if they, if you want to destroy your library, if Metatron's selling you, it is okay. Okay, people out there, don't do this. But Jay, it's okay for you to do it. Yeah, I mean, I've done it two or three times already. So um, yeah, because I know when my life gets that bad, you know, um, I know that's where I know that's the place I need to look first. So um, you and I can talk another time. Mm -hmm. and see if we can't together come up with a way to better protect your, you know, your life histories mm -hmm. so that they don't get in. They're sneaky, these little guys. They are. They, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So. This already yeah. answers the question I was going to ask, which mm -hmm. is like, when we're going out, like when I go into any place where there's, you know, a haunting, like when I'm terrible for space clearing because I bring in the Akashic energy, the, the pure love from all dimensions and radiate it out. So anything that doesn't like that, they just go away till I'm gone. And then as soon as I'm gone, they come back. So I'm like, oh, everything feels good. And then I leave and they all come back in. So I need to really mute, I have to cover myself and hide myself energetically so that I can see what's actually in there. Otherwise I scare them off. Jay, I'm wondering just by the nature of the soul warrior you are, you must constantly have dark beings want to challenge you. You know, like it must be exhausting. Have, and Kim, they all want to be your buddy, right? Like, oh. <laughs> something like, like that and i mean the fact the fact is you know it's we we live in the soup okay and um it doesn't matter whether it's you or me or someone else um mm -hmm. you know across the street even though they're not aware of it doesn't mean they're not affected by it and, right um and i think to the degree that you start generating more light and raising your vibration and you start making a difference in the world. They don't like that. They don't like the fact that I can take this one symbol and, and, and shift everything in, in two seconds. And the fact that I'm teaching it, okay? Um, and writing books about it and classes. Yeah. And so, you know, they don't like that. So I, I take it as I'm doing something right that I got their attention, but it doesn't make it easy, you know, so. Right. And you guys, I am once again, very uh, horribly. This is, Jay, these are Jay's books <laughs> and his teachings. These and are the, these are the, this is the work I've been channeling for the past three years from Mary Magdalene. And there's three books. Uh, the first one deals with, you know, 
how to use the inner planes for transformation and spiritual growth. And it's if you're looking for a simple way to grow metaphysically and raise your vibration, that's a good place to start as well as the angel work. The second book works on 12 behaviors uh, on a soul level across all lifetimes using the energy that you connect with from the first book. So they build they build on each other. And then the third book, which which isn't out yet, I'm still editing, um, has techniques for energetic regeneration of the physical body. Okay, so it's quite powerful um, paradigm shifting. If you, you know, is that if that's something you'd like to dabble in, um, certainly I find it very powerful. Um, so. 